Love Ministries. And we are happy that we all can be in the house of God. Uh, before we continue with the rest of the service, we have the dedication of a baby. You want to call it christening? You want to call it dedication? The Bible says they dedicated Jesus Christ. And we do have the dedication of this wonderful, wonderful baby of Rebecca and Oren. We invite them to come to the front. And all friends, family members, those who wish to identify themselves with them, we certainly uh, welcome you here today by God's grace. While they're coming, let me tell you that today we are speaking on a subject of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. The Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. We want to talk about that here today. As we welcome this father and this mother and this beautiful child into the house of God. It's all right. Oren, you're welcome. Rebecca, you're welcome. All lovely friends, family, uh, grandparents whom we know very well, brother uh, Desmond, and Sister Elizabeth, we're happy to have all of you here in the house of God. I see other people I recognize here also. Good to see every one of you. And uh, is Samuel the Godfather? <laughs> anyway, we are happy, certainly happy and rejoicing to be here in the house of the Lord. Uh, and we are, we are inspired and encouraged that there are still people that will bring their child into God's house for a blessing. Amen. And to start their lives right. They may go wrong later on, off track and everything else. But the Bible says if you start them right, even if they stray, they'll come right back on track after a while, Amen. right? So I want to make that clear here today, that every parent has a part to play. We're not here to just bring children and adopt them in the world and leave them and go our ways. But we have a part to play within their lives. Amen. And uh, dedication or christening is not an abandonment or abandoning the child to the church or to anybody, you have your position as parents. Once you were just a young man, she was just a young woman, but with the birth of children, you become a father, and she becomes a mother. The role changes. These are the changing seasons of life that we all experience. Now, you must recognize that in actual fact, you are an instrument of God for us to bring forth the child. And now you're an instrument of God to raise and rear this child in the fear of God to protect, to provide, and to train this child. We have our part there to play. So you are the coach. Uh, this is not basketball, this is not a game, it's a life that you hold in your hands. And God has called you, out of all the people in the world, He chose you to be the trainer of this child. And the Bible tells us, train up the child while they're young, so that when they get older, she's paying attention to me here now, uh, right? 
uh, they will not depart from the way. So we're happy for this position. And uh, that is a position I trust that you voluntarily accept. You don't accept it by co coercion or um, because you feel that you have to do it, but because it's in your heart. Amen. Now, the scripture I quoted is in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. But if you want to train up a child in the way they should go, that means you know the way. It, it, it assumes the fact that you know the way, because that's the way you're going to be able to train up the child. Uh, remember when Jesus was just young, and, uh, and uh, Mary came and said, uh, said to him, we were seeking you, uh, I and your father were seeking you, and he kind of rebuked her, though he was, he was a child physically, it was God in flesh. He said, woman, now she knew who was speaking, that wasn't the child speaking, that was God speaking through, and saying, woman, don't you know I must be about my father's business? I've got to carry on God's business, right? So you've got to carry on God's business. You know, uh, you see uh, Lambert and Sons business, Simpson and Sons, well, this is God and Sons. And God chose you to be one of His, to be able to raise this child uh, for His glory and for His honor. Now, it's a full-time job. It's not a part-time job. And sometimes it's going to tax you emotionally and in your pocket. Because raising a, a child properly is not cheap. It starts from since they're baby right up to college and university. And I'll tell you right now, because uh, I have some experience with that, it costs a lot of money. And it costs a lot of emotional ups and downs. That's true. Many of the nights when uh, the mother and I try to lay there and fall asleep and you know your child is out there somewhere with their friends, they say, but you're still wondering what, where the friends going to lead them, where the friends going to take them, what are they doing, and this and that, and you're still up in the night, turn, twisting and turning on your bed. And sometimes my wife would get up and she would go sit in the chair Thank God we don't have one of those old rocking chairs, but uh, she would sit in the chair and constantly casting her eye at the window. <laughs> and then when the child starts coming in the house, go back up to bed as if she was sleeping. But she wasn't sleeping. <laughs> the mother's heart was still caring and thinking about her child. And so will the father think about his child and protect his child in every possible way, right? That's very important. And uh, in training the child, the Bible tells us foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Now, this is not the Bible advocating child abuse. But uh, we know that uh, we had some correction uh, from our parents and it didn't do us bad it did us good mm -hmm. and that doctor what is his name this doctor that was giving all kind of chest doctor what wow. not doctor spock oh. come on that's <laughs> that's our wars man <laughs> anyway he was giving advice and saying, you should not ever, ever, okay, that's the psychologist, don't touch the child, just speak soft and nice, you may emotionally harm them if you raise your boys, and until now the teachers can't hardly teach in the schools, amen, but I had to know that he had a strap hanging there, and the strap name was Jack. And when you do something and he says, well, get me, Jack, you know what's coming. <laughs> and <laughs> if you're on the road and you behave badly and some older person sees you, 
And they said, I'm going to tell your father. Oh my, my goodness. You, you may get to that school, and the school teacher call and tell your father, uh, that boy or that girl, this and that, and the other, you get it in school, and then you go home and you get it again. Well, that's all is lost in this generation now. Uh, until the, ch the children come out like a bunch of wild donkeys. I don't want to use the best thinking term. <laughs> and uh, wild goats. Nobody giving them any training, any boundaries, guidelines, or nothing. Uh, not giving them an outline to live by. And so they adopt any kind of lifestyle and hope that they're going to turn out good. Well, we're not hoping. We've been given a job, and we got to raise our children the way God tells us. And he will guide us if we will obey his word. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. So, as we bring this child to this altar for dedication, I want to ask you uh, today, or uh, will you do your best to raise this child in the fear of God? Good. Will you, Rebecca, do your best to raise this child in the fear of God? You don't have to know as much as me or any body else that hold the Bible in their hand, but you need to know God himself and enough to know how to raise them the right way. And that means that you need to be in some of this book here, right? Praise the Lord. Very, very important for you to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't doubt for an instant that God knows everything. Listen to what he said one time to one prophet, and I'm going to uh, wind this up. Before I formed thee, even in your mother's belly, I knew you. And before you even came out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee to be a prophet to the nation. Listen to Paul. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Amen. Hallelujah. So God has intentions towards you and towards this child for, to, for you to do your best and to raise your child the way he wants you to. And the greatest legacy of any child is the memory that they will carry with them throughout life of their mother's bacon their father had them on their knee or hold them in their hands and talking to them. I have some of those memories. And, uh, and you don't lose children. You say, oh, they can't talk. They can't talk. Uh, but they, they pick up things. Uh, there's some people like myself that I can remember as far back as when I was creeping. And when I tell my mother things that when I couldn't hardly talk, that I saw, and because to me, I don't know if I imagined it, but I said, this, this, this. That's right. How do you know that? Yeah. And I heard you say this, this. How did you know that? Because even though I couldn't speak, they are like a sponge. They start picking up things right away. So be careful how you behave in front of them, what you say in front of them, how you treat one another in front of them. All that is very, very important. But thank God there is a reward for that. Amen. When you do that, it is required. God has said that, that when you do that, that he will reward you in every possible way. Because when it comes down, you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I'll just lay my hands on the child, pray for the child, and then we have a beautiful certificate that we would like to present to you, hoping that you will frame it or keep it somewhere so that when the child is older, uh, they're not aware, she's not fully aware of what's happening now, but later on you can explain to them that you have them blessed, dedicated in the house of God. So they're a blessed child, dedicated for God's honor and glory, right? You're a very interesting person here. I noticed that her eyes never left me all this time. I don't believe it, most children would be, but her eyes are just upon me. So I thank the Lord for that. Amen. Good to see this girl.
going to apply it in his own way. <laughs> Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father. Yes. Yes, Lord. In obedience to thy word. Yes. As Simeon the prophet laid his hands upon Jesus. Yes, I lay my hands upon this child. Jesus. Orion. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the blessed Holy Spirit will now come and rest upon her. Follow her for all the days of her life. And at the end of life's journey, lead her safely home. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray for these two parents, Father. Yes, Lord. That your hand will be upon their lives. Amen. You will lead them also that they may lead the child. And I pray that they will go ahead to this pathway yes. as you bring them to a full revelation and understanding of who you are and who they are in their position. We ask this blessing as we dedicate this child for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for coming here and being in the house of God.
Well, we know 
of who the Holy Spirit is. When you talk about God, by the way, uh, they know what you mean. Uh, the one who created the world and, you know, influenced men's lives and destinies and their future and everything else. They know who God is like that. And, and then, um, and they also know that God was the father of Jesus. Amen. And uh, Jesus born in Bethlehem and so on. They know that. When you talk about Jesus Christ, they, most people have an idea of who he, who he is, was, and is. They have a full idea. And then when you talk about the Holy Spirit, uh, then that's another matter. Because I want to tell you here today, the Holy Spirit is a person. Amen. Just like you and I are persons. Amen. You have not seen me. And I have not seen you. You've seen my body. But you haven't seen me. I, this is my body. Who's that person? The person that's living in here is saying, this is my body. But you haven't seen that person that's talking to you. You're hearing the person, but you're not seeing the person. That's what Paul meant. When he said, only when we get on the other side, we will know as we are known. Because we are spirits living in human bodies, right? But the Holy Spirit is not as God, the great, universal uh, power and spirit that has no physical body until this day where he has created a bright body for himself. Amen. But you understand me what I'm saying? That God is a spirit whom you can't see with your eyes. Right? So here, but he is a person. Mm -hmm. He is not a cloud. No. Some people imagine the Holy Spirit, ooh, is a cloud floating around. Holy Spirit is a myth. Some people think, it, oh, it's just a story they make up. He's a myth. Or, or you have the Holy Spirit when you have good thoughts, good ideas. You have the Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is a person. He's not just an idea. He's not just a good thought or anything like that. Or when you imagine this person, then you got, oh, no, that's not it. You're not, you don't have the Holy Spirit even when somebody sprinkles you with so-called holy water. That's not what it is. The Holy Spirit, I repeat, is the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. He is not the third person of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. This is what they're trying to tell you. Uh, there is God, the old man, and then there is Jesus, the son, and, and then the Holy Spirit is floating around to do God's bidding. You see, they misinterpret the scriptures. They don't understand. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. Amen. Not three, but one. Amen. God in the Father, he's God in the Son, he's God in the Holy Ghost, he's God the only one. I know God, he's God, and God will never change. I know God, he's God, and Jesus is his name, Jehovah of the Old Testament, created a body for himself to come and live among us on earth. And that body's name was called Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 When he died, they crucified him on the cross. Then out of him came God was released back out. And now it's called the Holy Spirit. But one God, I am a father, I am a son, and I'm a human being, but I'm not three people. God is a father. God created the body that he lived in. The, the God was in Christ, reconciling the world himself. God lived in a body called Jesus Christ to reconcile the world himself. And then when they crucified the body, the spirit that lived in it went back, came back down on the day of Pentecost, and is here among us. Amen. And with us. 
He said, this time I'll be with you forever. Yeah. Right? When I was in flesh, they could crucify me and you couldn't see me anymore. But I'll be with you. I'll be even in you to the very end of the age. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord God. Hallelujah. So, I want you to know he came back on the day of Pentecost. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit now come to be in the life of the believer. Because where does he live? He lives in our hearts if we allow him to live in our hearts. Amen. If we receive him in our lives, then he lives in our lives. And the first thing the Bible tells you he comes to do is to convince you and convict you of sin. Yes. Amen. That's what he's here to do. Amen. All of us, we were in the world. Yes. I don't know about you, but I was in the world. Yes. And then, uh, uh, another part, I felt I was doing a little better when I became a church member. Mm -hmm. You know, I became a church member. But the Bible says you are still a sinner. Yes. Regardless if you're a church member, and you don't know yet in the power of salvation, you are a you're still a sinner. Amen. You're a man believer trying to be a Christian, but not yet born again. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I went into a service. I also read a marvelous, wonderful book. And I recognized I was an unbeliever, even though I was a church member. I recognized I was an unbeliever, and all the have been teaching down through all this time, a lot of it is false. Amen. Back to the word. Amen. And so what he hope took me back to the word. Amen. And I caught a revelation of what God was saying to me. Amen. And it convinced me and convicted me of my sin that I was nothing but a lost church member and a denominational follower. And I was changed by the power Amen. You are born again, son of God, by revelation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for doing this for me. God, the Holy Spirit, when I was praying and crying my heart out there in the presence of God, why didn't I see this before? For so many years, I followed the church, but I've never seen this before. Uh, then the Lord Jesus reached down Hallelujah. his hand for me. Amen. The songwriter says, I was lost. I was undone. Amen. Without God or his son. When he reached down his hands for me. Amen. I saw a light. Amen. I saw a light. I wasn't walking in darkness no more. Amen. But I saw a light. And in the light, a ladder came down. Amen. I was Like a mother will wash a baby and clean it up. He cleaned 
me up and wash me and put me into service. Give me great joy and give me a peace of mind that I have never known. Hallelujah. But it was the Holy Spirit that pointed me right back to the Word of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I tell you, friends, it's the Holy Spirit that led me like it led Simeon to Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Spirit led me to the Word. Amen. You know the prophet, he said, uh, just like Simeon was led straight to the Christ back then, do you think you just turned up in this church by chance? He said, it's the Holy Spirit that led you here today. Yeah. Amen. That you should hear what you need to hear. Yeah. Amen. That's why you're here in the house of the living God. Praise God. And I received the Holy Spirit by the opening and revelation of the Word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. But now that you got it, what you going to do with it? Mm. Or what does he do for you? Now that you got the Holy Spirit. I'm talking to believer. I'm talking to unbeliever. I'm talking to everybody. Are you paying attention to me? Amen. Yeah. A little child having enough sense to pay uh, attention to me when I was preaching. I wasn't even preaching. I was just talking. And that child never took her eyes off of me, not for one second. Amen. And you are here in the house of God, at least you can praise God. Amen. Amen. African Proverbs say, even a chicken knows when it drinks water to raise the head up to heaven and praise God. Amen. Amen. Born like a parrot will quote like a quote or a parrot like a parrot. 
uh, like that. Everything else, my friend, you, you're born of a, of, 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 of a donkey, you hee haw, hee haw, you're always hearing people business, ha ha ha, and everything else like that. If you're a mule, you won't listen to the preacher, you're stubborn like anything else. Preacher can beat you with the gospel till you drop dead and you're moving. Hey, my God have mercy. All kinds of things like that. But if you're, because they have to act according to the nature, every seed before after its time. Yeah. And if you are after God's seed, you're going to produce after his time. Yeah. You want God's life, and you produce God's life or the yeah. life of God in you. Amen. You cannot be on board. And when you're a Christian, 
You can't be on board. Amen. Amen. The devil wants to be.